Okay, so Big Tree Tech have sent me a Raspberry Pad 5 to review, and uh, it's not the first screen I've had from Big Tree Tech. This 5 inch screen, which was for a Raspberry Pi 4, uh, I had quite a while ago actually, and did some reviews and some tests on that uh, and found it very nice. Where this is different is it uses a Compute Module 4. Now, my Compute Module 4 is inside this Seed Studio case, so I need to get it out of there first. So I'll take the screws out. And this just pops out and I've just got thermal paste on my finger because I remember I used thermal paste last time I put this together. Let's get rid of this with some cotton wool buds and clean it up with some isopropyl. I've just ordered a litre of isopropyl for the bed of my 3D printer and I'm always using it for various things. Just taking out the last screw that holds it in place and actually it holds it onto the baseboard. Uh, so now, uh, I remember seeing in Jeff Gearling's blog, this is quite tricky to take off. And he said you're supposed to go straight up when you take it off. And he ended up using some spudges. So I think I'll, well, let's try it with fingers first of all. <laughs> oh, blimey, it's quite tight. This has never been taken off. This is my only compute module for. And my model is the Wi-Fi model with four gig of RAM. And it's a 32 gig EMMC drive. But uh, as you can see, you can get various different versions of this. So you can choose not to have Wi-Fi. You can choose to go right down to one gig or right up to eight gig. And you can also have no storage. Uh, so that means that you have to use an SD card or a USB stick to boot from it. I was thinking of getting one of the more basic models, maybe not the one gig model, but maybe the two gig model. Uh, although I'm, I'm guessing that uh, availability is probably not good. Let's have a look on Pi Hut. Okay, so sold out at the moment, but it would normally be 2850 on Pi Hut for the 1 gig model, and the 2 gig model would be £33.20. So I think the 2 gig model is probably one of the best ones. Yeah, for value for money, look, look how much it jumps up to 4 gig and then down for 2 gig. So I might try and source one of those. Have a look on RPI Locator, because every time I look at RPI Locator, there often is uh, Compute Module 4s. Yeah, so 2 gig. No Wi-Fi. Yeah, 38.50 is quite a reasonable price. This is in Switzerland. Uh, they always seem to have them in stock. So I've got a spudger from my toolkit. So let's see if we can pop this up. If I do it that way, though, I think I'm leaning on what looks like a camera piece. So let's try it from the side. Let's twist. Yeah, that's popped up nicely. It is tiny as a board. Let's put it next to a Pi 4. Because I did get asked the question the other day uh, as to why you'd buy a Compute Module 4. Uh, so a Pi 4 has obviously all the connectivity and is kind of a fully finished computer. You don't really need much else to be able to get it up and running. The Compute Module 4 is the same power, but obviously the footprint of it is tiny. And you can add only the bits you need. So in the case of this board uh, from Seed Studio, this has got a couple of USB 3s, but it's also got a couple of Ethernet sockets. Uh, no GPIO pins because this is designed to be used as a mini router. We've seen how big tablets are that are based on the Raspberry Pi 4. This is the Raspad 3. I really like it as a device. It actually stands up vertically as well, but it is pretty chunky. Uh, and when you look at the Computer Module 4 and the connectivity on the bottom, the way it would attach to a board, it does all talk about being super slim. Now, this screen is a little different because, yes, it is definitely slimmer than the Raspad, but it still has an Ethernet connection, it still has GPIO pins, uh, it's still got a full-size HDMI socket. In fact, let's go through all the connections that it's got. So we've got three buttons here, which are brightness on the outsides and rotation on the middle. We've got three USB 2 sockets, one, two, three. SD card slot, full-size HDMI. They talk about a multi-function USB-C socket, and this looks like a camera slot here as well. So to clip it on, uh, if you're going to try and line it up, if you hold it by the side, you can actually see which way it is up. And that, you can see it's lining up here. If I spin this around, because there didn't seem to be any markers to say which way around, but you can see that this is much lower now. So it's definitely this way around. I can line it up with the holes and then push it down. And there are screw holes. I've left the little cellophane bits on there because I'm not going to bother screwing it on. I think it will just stay in place. It feels pretty tight. And there's a switch on the front here, and this mode is CAN bus mode, which is a robust vehicle bus standard designed to allow microcontrollers and devices to communicate with each other's applications without a host computer. 
Could you tell I was reading that? I'm going to use USB mode, um, but that other mode is generally for uh, using with other devices uh, like 3D printers they show. Now I need to go in a bit closer for this next bit. There are little tiny switches here. So you can see here it says CAN, EEPROM, boot and USB. This is the tiniest, this is a zero uh, screwdriver mount, really, really tiny. And uh, it's just about small enough to be able to switch these switches. But I need to be able to turn these two on. So one, and I'm looking through my phone screen to try and see this. So both of those USB settings are on. Now I should be able to write an operating system to it. So I'm gonna boot up Twister OS. I've got the USB-C cable, USB-C to USB-A, which actually came with the device. It's really important that this needs to be a data cable. And here we are, there's Twister booted up. So let's plug this in to the USB-C socket. Pop it on my stand. Now, unlike plugging, say, a mobile phone in, it doesn't get recognized straight away. You have to put it into a different state. Jeff Geerling's blog is very good for this, and this is what I use for this. So this is the blog, How to Flash Raspberry Pi OS onto the Compute Module 4. So if we scroll down, so using USB boot to mount the EMMC storage. Now, I've already done most of it because I've already flashed a Pi before. I did show it in my mini router video, um, but the bits I need to do now is this bit, CD USB boot, and also sudo Raspberry Pi boot. So CD USB boot and then sudo dot forward slash RPI boot. And you can see it's detected it and found it. So that will now mount that as a drive. So if I go down to my files, uh, you can see boot and root is there because I've already written an operating system to it. So you can use Raspberry Pi Imager or you can drag files over if you were doing pin OS or Berry boot, you would just drag files over to the folder uh, in the right format. So if I start typing Imager, Click on that. So choose OS, I'm using Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit bullseye. Choose storage, and you can see my EMMC drive shows up. And then I would hit write, but I've already done this. Uh, it flashes just the same as it does to a USB stick or an SD card. So let's close all this down. Now I've got to switch these little switches back over. So let's zoom in on my phone again. And one, two, oh, not quite, two. Obviously better not to use a metal device for the, this bit, but as long as you're touching the plastic bit, it should be okay. So I've plugged in my mouse keyboard, power, and also HDMI, and I'm just booting it up for the first time. So it does talk about enabling the USB 2 hub uh, in the instructions, but actually mine's already enabled because my mouse and keyboard is working, and if I double click on the USB stick that I've just plugged in, that works absolutely fine as well. So we just need to address the display drivers. So here's the GitHub, uh, so let's scroll down. Here we are, DSi1 display. Okay, so it won't let me copy it for some reason, so I'll just open a terminal and type it all in, like the old days of the Spectrum. Okay, that's all copied in, so let's hit return. Yep, everything looks all right there, so let's reboot and see what happens. Okay, so we have some life on the little screen now. Let's see if the HDMI still works as well. And it'll be interesting to see which one it picks as the main monitor. So it looks like it's picked the top monitor as the main monitor because it's still got the taskbar on it. So let's boot it up without my main display attached. Yeah, it's actually very bright and very sharp. Let's just get the exposure a bit better. There you go, that's much better. So if I wanted to launch a game, I can use the touch screen, games, and uh, I've got PPSSPP, the emulator on here. So if I use my Xbox controller, and I've put GTA on here. Now sound-wise, I'm just using a Bluetooth speaker. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. The screen is nice and responsive. It's very colorful, actually. It is a good-looking screen. I'm standing a bit far away from this to play it, but it's working fine and I haven't done any overclocking or anything like that. I haven't changed any settings on PPSSPP. I downloaded this through Pi Apps. A little bit of slow down then. So let's try something else. Uh, if I go into the menus, you can see all the menus are accessible from the controller. So if you're gonna use this as a handheld, this will work absolutely fine. 
So if you use a mouse and keyboard, I can launch Minecraft because it works better on mouse and keyboard. This is the Pi edition. This was downloaded through Pi apps. Let's just pick all the standard settings, but all the text is nice and clear. So even though it's a little five inch screen, everything's very crisp. Let's just do a survival world. And let's, oh, I'm right up the top. So you can see, yeah, it looks looks nice. The Certainly the refresh rate of the screen seems decent because it does look nice and smooth. And uh, I'm really impressed with how good the color is on it. Yeah, working nicely. I'm pretty sunny outside today, so I figured I'd try it on a power bank out in the garden. Yeah, that's working fine. Obviously there's a bit of reflection on there, but it's still pretty bright and uh, nice and responsive. Yeah, happy with that. As you can see, it's very handy for showing the monitoring of my 3D printer. And if I want to move this image up to the big screen, I can minimize this and uh, drag it onto the other screen this way. There you go. And then I can make it full screen on the big screen whilst I use the small screen for something else. So the 3D printing you just saw me doing uh, in my garage was this back cover. You can actually print out a housing for this. And uh, I haven't started printing out the main housing. I've just done the back cover for now. But I was using Motion iOS on a Pi Zero 2W in my garage. You just go to the URL on the screen and it shows you what's printing out. Uh, I wanted to show what happens when you plug in a monitor. So all I've done is what I've shown in the video. So I've applied the uh, fix to make this little screen work. So if I plug in an HDMI cable and turn on my monitor, you can see it comes up with this sort of greenish screen. And if I move around, I've got the mouse on the top screen you can see here. If I move it to the left hand side, uh, it appears on the bottom screen now. Let's just darken that so you can see that. But if you shut down and restart, then it works properly. Uh, so if you want to use this as uh, a big screen computer, you can still do it with this little screen. You don't have to change anything in config.txt. You don't have to delete anything. Uh, it all works fine. So if I let that shut down and switch it off and switch it on again, you can see it boots up and uh, it's on my main screen, it's on my little screen as well. Although the operating system is on the little screen, I guess you'd have to reverse that change if you wanted to use this as a main screen monitor. Although I find it absolutely fine, uh, just say launching something, so say I launch the web browser and then just drag it up onto the big screen so you can see it's launched now. So if I minimize that and then pull that over to the right hand side, that's now on the big screen, as you can see at the top there. Uh, and the same with terminal as well. Uh, so if I click on the terminal, I can then drag that to the other screen. And if I switch over to screen capture, I can use the terminal normally. Uh, and you can see I can do any adjustments on the big screen, but I can also uh, use the web browser full screen. In fact, let's go to the Raspberry Pad 5 GitHub. There you go. So I'll put a link in the description to this. So you can see here under Raspberry Pad and Pad 5, we have the 3D printing files. So you can see the STL files for the backboard and the case. And uh, as it's quite a nice day, I think I'll go out and start that printing in my garage because it's definitely not too cold today. So thanks very much to Big Tree Tech for sending me this. It is a really impressive screen. It's very bright and it's very sharp. And I really like the size of it. And uh, I want to do more things with Compute Module 4. I've actually ordered another one, but that's for another video. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.